All right, let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vyond Deza, where India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be embarking on a visit to West Asia in the next few days in what is, of course, going to be a major diplomatic outreach. Now, the Prime Minister is expected to visit Bahrain and also the United Arab Emirates during his proposed tour. In Bahrain, Prime Minister Modi will be meeting with the country's top leadership. He will also be addressing the Indian community living there. While the United Arab Emirates, the Prime Minister will be conferred with the Zayed Medal. The Zayed Medal is in fact the highest civilian honour in the United Arab Emirates. Now, Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed Hadi had tweeted, had, had tweeted in the month of April appreciating the relationship between the two countries and had announced that he would be conferred the award. The West Asia, of course, has been a crucial partner for India in recent times. After India's decision to abrogate Article 370, remember, United Arab Emirates was in fact one of the first nations of the organization of the Islamic countries to come forth and support India. The United Arab Emirates envoy to India had also gone on to state that the move will of course bring about economic growth in the region, a public endorsement of India's decision to abrogate Article 370. Now, the Crown Prince had also been the chief guest at India's Republic Day celebrations back in the year 2017. And then the following year, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was the chief guest at the World Investment Summit in Dubai. With Bahrain, the visit will also open up new avenues for bilateral ties. 23 branches of the Indian banks are registered in Bahrain. And India's total investment in Bahrain from 2003 till 2018 has been an impressive $1.69 billion. Now, the Prime Minister's visit will also be a part of his journey to France, which will be hosting the G7 summit. Now, Modi is, of course, a special invitee at the outreach session at the G7 summit. All right, now, for more on this, we are joined in by my colleague Sidhan Sibyl, who's been tracking the developments very closely for us. Good afternoon to you, Sidhan. Now, this, this, of course, is a very significant visit by the Indian Prime Minister to the Gulf. Well, a significant uh, visit uh, and outreach to the West Asian countries and we have seen how since 2014 in the first tenure of the Modi government we have seen the Indian Prime Minister going to several West Asian countries whether it's Riyadh, whether it's UAE, uh, other Iran for example and uh, we have seen several incoming visits as well and I'm pretty sure that uh, even as we break the story first uh, there are uh, people in Pakistan who will be seeing it as a setback primarily because uh, this is a part of the world where Pakistan considers that it has a lot of weight and its own backyard. In fact, uh, uh, the, these are the countries who are part of the organization of the Islamic cooperation and uh, Pakistan has been in the past, we have seen how blocked India's membership th for the OIC, but despite that, UAE went forward and invited India for the OIC foreign ministers uh, meet, which happened earlier this week, uh, earlier this month, uh, earlier, in fact, uh, not this month, but earlier this year, and uh, we saw uh, uh, earlier this month, UAE coming out uh, uh, for, uh, for the support of New Delhi, becoming the first country to support New Delhi's uh, internal decision to remove the special status for the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, but if you look at the trade ties as well, there has been growing trade ties with uh, the West Asian countries and India, uh, something that is missing when it comes to ties between the West Asian countries and Pakistan. Absolutely indeed. And also the fact that you know, uh, United Arab Emirates was one of those first nations that came out in support of India when India abrogated Article 370 and now Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will also be visiting the United Arab Emirates. This, of course, strengthens the relationship between the two nations. Well, uh, this is a kind of a pre-scheduled visit which uh, we do expect uh, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs and its uh, uh, UAE counterpart to announce very soon. Uh, but this visit is primarily to confer the Indian Prime Minister the highest civilian award uh, which was announced in April. That was election season and that is why the Indian Prime Minister could not visit uh, UAE or any other countries because of the, uh, the, the, the election conduct which, ha which was ap applicable that time. And that is why this visit is now happening. And of course, this is a three-nation 
Russian visit. He will be going to UAE. He will be going to Bahrain, and he, of course, will be going to France. France, of course, was a visit that was announced uh, uh, by the Indian Ministry of External Affairs uh, a few weeks ago, and this is an important visit uh, to France as well because uh, it's after more than a decade that India has been invited to the G7 summit. The last time India was invited for the G7 summit was way back in 2005 when the then Prime Minister of India, Manmohan Singh, visited uh, uh, UK for the G7 uh, summit, and uh, the British Prime Minister had hosted them. But, but by and large, this also shows India's in increased engagement and strengthening of ties with France as well. Remember, France uh, played a crucial role in thwarting the joint, joint Chinese-Pakistani uh, attempt to rake up Kashmir at the UNSC. But uh, uh, when it comes to the visit of the Indian Prime Minister uh, to the West Asian countries, uh, we should look at the press conference with the Pakistani Foreign Minister uh, did earlier last week in which he accepted that uh, the West Asian countries won't be speaking much when it comes to raking up Kashmir by Pakistan primarily because of the big investment uh, these West Asian countries have done in, in, in India. Uh, especially we know that uh, last week also saw a big, uh, big announcement, a big deal right. being announced between Saudi Arabia and India's reliance. Absolutely indeed. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Siddhant, for joining us and getting us the latest in terms of this visit that has been announced. Meanwhile, before Prime Minister Narendra Modi, of course, heads for his visit in West Asia, he's presently on a two-day trip to Bhutan. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi earlier this morning addressed the students at the Royal University of Bhutan. The address was also attended by ministers, members of the parliament and other senior officials of the Royal Government of the Bhutanese Kingdom. Now, addressing the students, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, of course, asked the youth of Bhutan to work hard and take the Himalayan kingdom to greater heights. No other two countries in the world understand each other so well or share so much. And no two countries are such natural partners in bringing prosperity to their people. As Bhutan soars high in this endeavors, your 1.3 billion Indian friends will not only just look on and cheer you with pride and happiness, but also they will partner you, share with you, and learn from you. And referring to India's space programs and moon mission Chandrayaan-2, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that Bhutan is now well on its way of having its own satellite built by its own people. It is even a matter of great happiness that young Bhutanese scientists will travel to India to work on designing and launching Bhutan's own small satellite. I hope that someday, soon, many of you will be scientists, engineers, and innovators. Now, soon after his speech, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, of course, paid his respects at the National Memorial Cotton, which is a revered monument honoring the late third Druk Gyalpo. The Prime Minister also visited the Semtokha Zhong Monastery and offered prayers there yesterday. He also issued a joint press statement along with Bhutan's Prime Minister Lothe Shering. The Prime Minister Modi said that India and Bhutan may vary in sizes, but the two countries have beliefs and values that are common. Honorable Prime Minister of Bhutan for his press statement. Bhutan Nareshwa ki buddhimatta aur durdarshita ne bahut lambe samay se हमारे द्विपक्षीय संबंधों का मार्गदर्शन किया है यही नहीं उनके विजन ने भूटान को पूरी दुनिया के सामने एक ऐसे अनूठे उदाहरण के रूप में प्रस्तुत किया है जहां डेवलपमेंट को आंकड़ों से नहीं 
हैप्पीनेस से नापा जाता है जहां आर्थिक विकास परंपरा और पर्यावरण के साथ आगे बढ़ता है ऐसा मित्र और ऐसा पड़ोसी कौन नहीं चाहेगा साथियों यह भारत का सौभाग्य है कि हम भूटान के विकास में प्रमुख भागीदार है And Prime Minister Narendra Modi also inaugurated the rupee card, and a total of about nine memorandums of understanding were signed between the two countries. And I request for the audio-visual unit for the short video presentation, please. But also apart from all of this, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also planted a cypress tree at the monastery grounds. And besides this, this is of course Prime Minister Narendra Modi's second visit and the first one since his re-election. Now both leaders had wide-ranging discussions over the two days on bilateral, regional and global issues. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi of course was welcomed at the time when he landed in Thimpu with loud chants and then he also interacted with members of the Indian diaspora.